Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about barrel stunts and BOE, or unit conversions in the world of energy. Uh, people outside the energy world can find this a little bit confusing. I mean, we're all talking about hydrocarbons, so things like methane, um, you know, uh, propane, longer chain hydrocarbons, but they're all give you energy and all give you a lot of other things as well. So I'll talk a little bit about the units and how they all work, because it can be a little confusing. Um, oil quantities tend to be measured in two different ways. So volumes in um, in the Western world and the, the Anglo-American world uh, tends to be oil-filled barrels, and mass tends to be mainland Europe, former Soviet Union, and Asia, where they talk about metric tons. Uh, there are also energy equivalents such as BOE, barrel of oil equivalent, tons of oil equivalent, etc., and uh, units such as exajoules, British thermal units, etc. I'll talk a little bit about all of that. Uh, gas, meanwhile, tends to be measured in uh, in volume, uh, in the Anglo world tends to be cubic feet, in the uh, rest of the world tends to be metric, so cubic meters, and these are measured as standard conditions, so surface pressure and temperature. You also have liquefied natural gas, which I'll talk a little bit about later, and also energy equivalent linking it all together. So oils measured in two ways, as I said earlier, uh, USA and UK tends to be barrels of volume. Now the standard barrel was devised in the USA in the uh, late 1800s at 42 US gallons, or 35 imperial gallons, or about 159 litres. Meanwhile, uh, mainland Europe, uh, former Soviet Union, does everything in mass and metric tons. Now, that varies by the density of the oil, so someone coming from the Anglo world finds that a bit weird. A little bit about the density of different types of oil. Now, I did a video earlier on uh, market crudes, uh, which I'll link at the end of this program. And basically, you have relatively light crudes, such as this example here that looks a bit like Chardonnay, um, which tends to have a high premium to benchmark, although that's changing a little bit because of uh, market conditions, and a heavy oil, which tends to have a low premium to benchmark, looks a bit like Cabernet. Uh, please don't drink crude oil, it's very bad for you. Now, density of oil is measured in degrees API from the American Petroleum Institute using this formula here, 141.5 divided by the specific gravity minus 131.5, where water has a specific has an API of 10 and a specific gravity of 1. Uh, heavier crudes tend to be in the, in the teens, early 20s API. Medium grade crudes, late 20s, early 30s. Brent blend is, uh, is uh, about 38. Uh, WTI is about 41, and lighter crudes tend to be higher up than that, and uh, condensates tend to be in the 50s or 60s. This is a plot of the different types of oil blend. So you have API gravity here, and you have sulfur percentage. So you have very light crudes here around 70. Brent is uh, is here in the late 30s. WTI is in the in the early in the early uh, 40s. Urals is around 31. Arab light, etc and WCS is around 20, Western Canadian select heavy crude. And the size of the bubbles are the size of the volumes in the market. Um, and this is sourced from Platts. And this is a plot from uh, an earlier video I did on uh, the different types of market crudes. So how do you convert between weight and volume? So uh, Nathan Meathan, who's quite a uh, famous petroleum engineer, did, a, did a, uh, an article earlier, and this is some of his data where you've got different types of crude, so Maya from Mexico, Mars from the US uh, Gulf of Mexico offshore, Euros from Russia, Bonnie Light from Nigeria, Brent from the North Sea, WTI, West Texas Intermediate, and Tapis from Malaysia. They have different APIs, different specific gravities, so basically they get lighter, um, and you get uh, more barrels for your ton in these sort of situations and fewer tons for your, for your barrel. So these are conversion factors, and you can use a specific set of formulas to convert between the two for the specific crude that you're talking about. Uh, mostly the barrels per ton tends to be Urals, because that's what the Russians tend to export, and they use tons rather than barrels, although some of the oil is priced in barrels as well. When you're moving to natural gas, that's measured in volumes. Thank goodness. And the volumes are standard condition in terms of temperature and atmospheric pressure. And there's some specifications for calorific value and impurities. Um, again, so some gases would have, for instance, nitrogen impurities or CO2 impurities, which would uh, take the value less if you can't remove them. Um, gas can also be priced at energy value. So that can be kilowatt hours, gigajoules, British thermal units, or barrels of oil equivalent. And oil companies tend to use barrel of oil equivalent in their reserves reporting. But a BOE ain't exactly a BOE in terms of price, which I'll come to in a minute. 
So one barrel of oil equivalent, what does that mean? So that's 5.8 million British thermal units. 6.1 gigajoules, about 1.7 megawatt hours. Uh, typically, 5,800 5, uh, cubic feet of gas is equal to one BOE. So you have a 5.8 thousand uh, conversion factor. So um, a million barrels of oil is equivalent to 5.8 BCF of gas. Some people upgrade that to six, but 5.8 is really the number you ought to use. But in terms of price, it ain't necessarily so. This is a plot I did earlier. Uh, this is in 2019, although fundamentally the ratios haven't changed, although the prices would have done. So you have three different types of oil. You have Brent, which is the North Sea benchmark, WTI, which is the West Texas Intermediate, and WCS, Canadian West, uh, West Canadian Select, which is a heavy oil. And you can see that's trading quite a discount to the relatively lighter Brent and WTI oils. Then you have the gases. So you have NBP. So that's National Balancing Point. That's the UK marker. You have Henry Hub, which is the main US marker. So that's when people talk about natural gas in America, that's what they're talking about. And you have Waha, which is the West Texas hub. You can see Waha is quite a little bit, quite a lot less than Henry Hub, basically because there weren't at the time enough pipelines to take it into the North American system. So people had to sell it at a discount, you know, basically virtually giving it away. And then you have NGL, which are natural gas liquids. And I have a video on natural gas liquids, the unloved stepchild of hydrocarbons. And again, they are priced quite a bit less than the BOEs. So when people quoting reserves, they quote them in BOEs, but it ain't necessarily so in terms of price. An economist knows this and the economic value is there. And the final thing I'll just sum up is about liquefied natural gas. Now that's got its own conversion factors. Now what happens with liquefied natural gas is a picture of an LNG carrier, is it's liquefied at an export terminal, then shipped in a tank and then regasified an import terminal. And it tends to be measured in a million tons of LNG. So a million ton of LNG is roughly equivalent to just under 49 BCF of gas or 1.379 billion cubic meters of gas. And 1 million um, tons of LNG per year is 48.7 BCF a year uh, or 1.379 BCM a year. Typical LNG tanker would uh, have a capacity of around 72,000 tons. I mean, they do obviously vary. Some are bigger than others. But well, that's roughly how much this individual tanker would give you. So if you need to ship a lot of gas, you need to have a lot of tankers and they're moving backwards and forwards. So just to sum up, use different units in the energy world. Yes, I know it's crazy. I know it's annoying, but there are a lot of historical factors behind that. And basically these are baked in. So tons versus barrels in the oil world, metric versus imperial in the gas world. The conversion factors are relatively simple. Just you need to make sure what you're talking about. There's also different purposes in terms of uh, energy value and energy price, which I talked a little bit about, um, that a BOE is not a BOE in value. And that's a very important factor to take in mind. So thank you very much for your time. Please like and subscribe, and please have a check out some of my other videos on the topics of energy.